Jason, welcome. Hey, thanks. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you as well. Yeah. Jason, so tell me, which HR technology trends are you most excited about right now? So if we look at the trends going on in the space today, there's probably three that I would say, you know, I, I would highlight. You know, the first, and you can't uh, avoid it, is still the discussion of the cloud. Uh, as much as we say, hey, isn't everyone in the cloud already? You know, it's still a, a group of people, 25 to 30 percent at least, of organizations here, saying, how do we get to the cloud? And really, a cloud is now the starting point. You know, three to five years ago, we used to say, hey. Is a cloud really going to work? Is it going to be real? Is everyone going to go there? Now it's the starting point for everything else we see here at the conference and being able to add on to it and bolt on to those things. So we can't discount the cloud as what drives a lot of this. Um, the second big thing is now that I'm in the cloud, what do I do with it? And that's the push in making sure that everything that I deliver out to the workforce is available to them in what we call a frictionless workforce experience. Frictionless workforce experience, right. So, right product to the right people at the right moment through the right channel, okay? And that's not always mobile. It's not always desktop. It's not always even digital. But we're really saying for, in the world we live today, we have so many different types of workers doing so many different types of jobs. What's the right way to get information to them in a timely manner? that they can find really, really quickly. So everything around experience would really be the second thing that, that, I'm, that, I'm, that I see at this event. You know, and then the third thing is what I'll call the third bucket, which is all around digitization. And if we think about digitization, that includes things like artificial intelligence, like bots, like advanced analytics, really saying we're not just automating. So you know, we, in this shift to the cloud, what most organizations did is just take their stuff and put it online. That's automation. We're really in this era now where if we're not digitizing, we're going to die. And that's really reimagining what it is that we want to do and taking it from an employee and manager lens looking in instead of an HR department lens looking out. So if we take the cloud still as the foundation and building a mega strong anti-fragile foundation, you know, combined with the experience, because if, if, the, if it's not a good experience, not interface, but experience, people aren't going to interact with it. And then the third, digitization, which is bots and everything that I'm doing to really reimagine how work gets done. Those would be the three categories. When you say frictionless work experience, Jason, I wonder if you could kind of boil that down for me and give me an example of how that met my transfer to an everyday HR process. So, I mean, we could take, and I mean, look at the signs all around us here. Let we could, let's take onboarding as an example. So, I want to create an experience where an employee isn't onboarded, quote unquote. You know, an a new employee, like after they've just been through this huge 30, 40 day process of trying to get hired, like they're on a high. It's their first day. They're coming in high. And when all of a sudden they get there and there's, no computer, or there's no phone, or they can't find their manager, or they can't figure out how stuff gets done, it quickly goes from you know, fun to suck. So you know, when we think about onboarding as an example, like I want to start five days before, seven days before, and get them the information they need, get them prepped, get, continue to get them excited. So but day one when they show up, all that stuff's done. You know, they're ready and they're productive and they have a great experience. Now, that frictionless is taking the friction out of it, which is usually paper, which is usually manual processes, which is usually slowdowns all along the way to the point where I might not be productive until 30 days in as an employee. Now, we could take that across the whole spectrum, everything from time clocks and approvals in time to, hey, I'm having a baby or I'm changing my address. How do I make sure that I don't get stuck because every time I get stuck, it slows me down. And I think that we're going to see over the next two to three years, organizations say, let's talk, take bots. These are all what we call RAD processes. RAD? RAD. Repeatable, auditable, and documented. So they're all things that are pretty, you know, they're, they're normal. It's not like a once, a once in a lifetime I was sexually harassed. You know, I don't want a bot to help me with that. You know, but these things like changing a dress, having a baby, trying to take more vacation time, those are things that there's no reason that I can't enhance the work, workforce experience and make it frictionless, leveraging technology. So those are two really you know, short examples, but 
you know, the other part of a frictionless experience is adding value. So, you know, we always say that an experience is the combination of transaction plus interaction, which means, okay, I've got this transaction, but I want people interacting with it. So at the same time they're changing the address, wouldn't it be great to put them to the US Postal Service site so they can change their address there? And wouldn't it be great to go to their credit card sites so they could change their address there? So not just doing something to say, oh, now we have it for HR's sake, but the employees say, wow, it is great to work here. It's a great quote unquote experience and it's frictionless, which means it just works. Let's switch over into what do you think is being overhyped in HR tech right now? When we think overhyped, there's a term that I always use, which is SOS, which is shiny object syndrome. And in the shiny object syndrome, what happens is you come to an event like this where you've got, you're surrounded by 400 vendors. But in order, I mean, I always use the example of Siri or Alexa or Cortana. Like when you talk into your device and it somehow gives you a response, it's doing that because there's data somewhere that it's counting on. A lot of people come to a, that are here at this conference don't have good data. They don't have good foundational systems. And they're not, when they go to an AI booth, they're not going to see that. They're just going to see the piece that makes it come to life. So what's overhyped is the fact that I can just go live in three days or go live in seven days and be artificially intelligent or my machines can learn. They're all great technologies. And you know, in five years, we're going to be sitting here and we won't even use those terms anymore because it's just going to be built into the core. You know, of the solution. Just like touch, I mean, touch used to be big. Now like, oh, it's no big deal. I touch a piece of glass and it actually does something. 